On the 24th of April 2013, Rana Plaza, an eight-storey garment factory in Bangladesh, collapsed, killing 1,134 people. Workers reported that the building was structurally unsafe, but were forced back inside to continue their work. The Rana Plaza disaster highlights the horrific impacts of fast fashion. Marking the anniversary of the Rana Plaza disaster, Fashion Revolution Week is taking place right now, bringing together our global community to create a better fashion industry. Citizens from around the world come together to continue our fight for basic human rights and economic justice for garment workers and protection for our planet. My name is Zoe Akali. I am 21 years old and I'm studying in Düsseldorf, Germany at the Academy of Fashion and Design in fourth term. Uh, so because you're hosting the uh, fashion show in honor of the catastrophe in Rana Plaza, I wanted to include the Bangladesh culture. In my collection, I used an old sari and combined it with Western fashion and materials. Uh, yeah, I wanted to have this touch of color in every outfit. There is a contrast between this colorful zari and the the mater materials of the Western culture, for example, denim. And I wanted to break up the elegant look of the Zagi uh, with chains I used. So the collection has a more casual look and style. My goal is to bring up awareness and point out that we all have the power with our behavior to change the industry, the fashion industry. later and the industry still exploits its workers. Just a few months ago, Jayashree Katherbal, a garment worker at the H&M supply chain, was found dead after being raped and murdered by her supervisor. Over the last 20 years, product price has decreased substantially, meaning other costs have been cut in order to maintain a profit. These reductions lie within the supply chain. 
where safety measures are disregarded and wages are reduced in order to keep manufacturing costs as low as possible. The nature of fast fashion means that design, manufacture and distribution happen at an increased rate, with brands adding new styles daily. In order to keep producing collections so regularly at such a low cost, brands force outrageously low cost contracts onto their suppliers who feel obliged to accept or they risk losing the contract to cheaper competition. I've been in the business about 10 years now, all in Los Angeles. So I've seen some developments with fast fashion. When it starts with a customer, it's part of a whole big system where people are not making a ton of cash themselves, but they are programmed in our consumer society to want, to want, to want, to want. And they can have it at H&M or at Zara for, you know, under 20 bucks. There's pressures. There is extreme price pressures on the industry thanks to the influx of cheap goods on the market, effectively, and cute cheap goods. They're not quality, perhaps, but that's what a lot of girls just want to wear at that once or twice, and it was already on my Instagram, so I can't, can't wear it <laughs> again, you know? With brand deadlines set so tight, manufacturers are often fined by brands when production is overdue resulting in the workers' wages being cut even lower. Due to the constant threat, factory owners often disregard their local labour laws, refusing to maintain any safety standards. On top of this, most major brands do not actually own their factories, therefore holding no responsibility for the workers or the factory conditions. Effectively, they have all of the power and none of the responsibility. Hi, I'm Paula, I'm 23 years old and I'm a fashion design student from Dusseldorf, Germany. The main theme of the, of the show is um, rethink fashion, so I took that and to me that is a very important theme because um, the fashion industry is so, so toxic and so fast um, that we need to change something in it. So I thought about what what, what does rethinking fashion mean to me and I as a designer love to uh, work with unusual and different materials so I decided on um, vinyl rackets um, the seven inch the small ones and um, I just went with it and from that era I, I took uh, leather jackets because everyone um, or at least a lot of people do have old leather jackets at home that they do not use anymore which is so sad um, because they they tend to be very very durable um, so I took that and combined it with um, the vinyl records to make um, something um, that I call my project replay fashion um, so I, I have a um, heat gun that um, I used and shaped it shape to, to shape the um, the records around um, a body my vision would be that um, we as designers, we as young designers, we have a responsibility. Um, we need to change this industry. The fast fashion industry um, is, is very toxic, not only for the people working in it, but also our planet. And um, so we need to make a statement. We are putting a statement out there, um, hopefully making people think about what clothes they buy and that they can actually upcycle and recycle their fashion and give them a replay and give them a new life um, so we can all write this change forward. Say goodbye employees, 80% of the people making our clothing are women of colour, ages 18 to 24, most of whom earn less than $3 a day. 
This is no coincidence and is of course favoured by employees, allowing factory owners to play into the cultural stereotype of women, particularly women of colour, being repressed, disregarded and in some cases physically attacked and killed. These experiences have been exacerbated by the pandemic, with workers now facing what the industry is calling the triple squeeze. Order volume, speed of payment and price have all been greatly reduced as a result of COVID, leaving garment workers in a position of great vulnerability, facing homelessness and starvation. With 5 out of 10 of the world's richest people making their money in the fashion and retail sector, it is incredibly apparent that this extreme wealth is achieved through the exploitation of the garment workforce. Generating so much profit for a handful of people, the industry continues to allow for the unfair pay and hazardous conditions which impact the livelihood of its workers. Oh, my name is Jenny, originally from Indonesia. I love this world. My mom is teller, my father is teller, my grandfather is teller. So I grew up with the machine. I left one kid in my country. I left him when two weeks to survive because I, I don't have a um, partner. So I had to write sing this song. I'm sorry. Yeah. He didn't know me because I never see him anymore. He didn't know. I'm sorry. The first time I worked, I was at Hot Garment Factory. The factory, they don't have name, they don't have tissue in the bathroom, nothing. Just doing work or how fast you can. Every week she pay me 125. I don't know my rights. I don't know nothing. The factory, they are paying me different price with the other workers because I, I cannot communication with the other workers. So the lady was cheating on me all the time. I feel sad and angry, but in the same time, I can do nothing. I don't have any power. Common worker is high skilled workers. Not everyone can do it. For me, it's like beauty, like art. I want to make spectacular fashion for Lady Gaga. I think she won't do that. She won't wear it. <laughs> A lot of fashion customer, they don't, they don't want to know a story. They don't want to know process, production, and everything. Oh, I don't care about that. I want the cheap clothing. But I was uh, a victim until this place. I'm survivor right now. I'm Fasli Ben Zahari. I'm uh, 24 years old. I'm into this old workwear from all over the place. And there are a lot of archive pieces from, uh, from Japan. There's like these beautiful kimonos and it's almost, almost too beautiful to wear. So that's my inspiration for, uh, for this piece. It's a patchwork of uh, old um, of old and used fast fashion uh, items. And what makes the kimono so interesting is that the pattern is, is so square that you almost don't waste any material. Um, this piece will also get waxed. And the waxing will have two meanings. One is it will be waterproof, like work where it used to be. And second, it's an ode to, uh, to the old Levi's jeans where miners used to, uh, they used to use candles to enter the mines and then the, the candle wax would fall on their jeans, on their clothes and would stay there for ages. And for the, for the trouser, I made a traditional, uh, 
Japanese working pants. I forgot the name. But what it does, it's um, it's a wrap pants. So it fits almost everyone from S to L. That's a good thing. So you can pass it on to the next generation, which is very important for this, for this project. So it doesn't get thrown out. And it has complementary patches. Uh, yeah. So if, if it gets a hole or anything, it breaks down, you should patch it. Always repair, don't replace. That will be my model for this, uh, for these pieces. My vision for the fashion industry would be, we, we should, I think we should um, repair and not replace. I think we also should respect artisanry and uh, craftsmanship a lot more than we are right now. I think we kind of lost that in the in the fast fashion industry. And the moment you wear something for, let's say, 10 years, it also gets personalized. And it's so much nicer when it's your own, your own piece that you have had for years with the experience you had in it. It is not just humans who are paying the price for cheap clothing. Our planet is also under great threat. At each stage of production, from fibre to shop floor and beyond, the life cycle of garments cause great environmental damage. Cotton farming has dried up what was once one of the world's largest lakes and destroyed soil quality, meaning new plots must be created, often through deforestation. Factories release toxic dyes into waterways, causing disease and death for both animals and humans who live in or depend upon this water. Rapid, low-cost production means quality is lost and garments don't last the way they ought to. Plastic fabrics, such as polyester, release microplastics into our waterways when washed, causing immense damage to marine life and vital ecosystems, even filtering into the food we eat. Synthetic fibre production and global garment distribution use significant amounts of fossil fuels, majorly contributing to the climate crisis and global warming. These are just a few examples of how fashion impacts the planet. I'm Hannah Cooper, I'm a Munich-based fashion designer and I graduated from the London College of Fashion last year in lockdown. I want the fashion industry to be a lot more sustainable, a lot more inclusive and take responsibility. So my main inspiration was Ophelia from Hamlet and that in my opinion, she's a very underestimated character. She's actually a, a very strong young woman who is using her agency to communicate her message. And the scene I chose from Hamlet is where she comes into the room she looks absolutely insane. Her hair is flowing all around her and she has flowers in her arms. And she takes these flowers and hands them out to people in the room. And through these flowers, she's actually communicating that she knows exactly what this character has done. So like Ophelia, I use flowers to communicate my message. Um, through natural dyeing, I've been dyeing with mm, flowers or vegetables or whatever I could find um, around me for the last two years. Red cabbage was the first um, I used and it, depending whether you use it with 
um, gosh, what it's called, baking powder or um, lime and lemons. You can get colors from blue, green, pink, purple. It's really, it's a very versatile vegetable. And um, this is also why I only work with natural fibered fabrics because they're very good for dyeing. And um, they're a lot closer to nature. I feel um, a lot more working in a symbiosis with nature, which is my sort of my main message within my work as well, that I want to um, work together with the seasons, with nature, with natural fibers, but then to also combine that with modern technology. So we have a, a contemporary feel, but also contemporary relevance. But I believe that with the two, with nature, with craft and with technology, we can um, make meaningful fashion. industry truly is a microcosm of our society. The industry is built on systemic sexism and racism resulting in both the humanitarian and climate crisis which exists both within and as a result of the industry. Our overproduction and overconsumption is having a detrimental impact on both people and the planet. We must begin to consider the environmental and human cost of the clothes we wear. My name is Anna Motis, I'm 22 years old and I study fashion design in my fourth semester at AMD Academy Mode and Design in Düsseldorf, Germany. My collection for the Rethink Fashion Show will consist of pre-used clothing and other textiles because I think it's important to make use of what you already have and what materials are already available to anybody really because there's quite um, an overconsumption happening in the fashion world and I think it's important to kind of put a stop to that so that's why I decided to work with uh, mostly anything I already have and I also focused on using knitwear because I think it's quite interesting how knitwear and other um, textiles that are based on yeah, a lot of craftsmanship can um, play a big part in upcycling clothing and giving garments a new life and that's why I decided to make use of that. As a fashion designer or a young fashion design student as myself, I think it's very important to acknowledge that there are a lot of faults in the fashion industry, that there could be a lot of uh, alternatives concerning sustainability and fair working conditions and by taking part in a fashion show like this, I think it's a, a great opportunity to take one step in the right direction and to be part of 
the change that is really needed in the fashion industry right now. I still remember the feeling I wanna dance till I can't no more All of this time I've been dreaming Dreaming on the dance floor Remake is a community of fashion lovers, women's rights advocates and environmentalists on a mission to change the industry's harmful practices on people and our planet. We make sustainability accessible and inclusive across our three pillars of work. Our first pillar is education, producing films, investigative stories and lectures to engage citizens on the impacts of fast fashion. Secondly, we focus on advocacy, leading campaigns centred around living wages, gender and climate justice and long-term systemic change at the policy level. Our third and final pillar is transparency. Remake rates fashion brands through our brand directory, making it simple for you to discover which brands are doing good and who needs to step up. I was working in, a, in another place in LA but different. Uh, they press you too much, too much pressing. They want more quantities, they want more production. They don't pay well. But here it's different. We have a culture here and it's, you know, well well lit and well ventilated and they have a nice break room and we know each other and things like that. You know, these other big corporate companies are totally profit driven and that any they say it can't be done responsibly, that's that's a lie. It is all possible. That's how we've grown to this point, I mean, because we believe in the cause. It's not only work or it's not only gimme, 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 gimme production, gimme more this no, is people can feel uh, comfortable to work, and if they are comfortable, they are they're happy. I think everybody is happy to work because here, because of it. Nobody wants to leave. We are family here.